Praise the Lord, friends. Thomas Manton IV. I'm continuing in the life of holiness, and I'm in volume three. Uh, several things on my on my heart from the Lord I want to share. Some some special uh, life application points that will really help you <clears throat> in the realm of walking with God. Uh, number one, the anointing of God will be more powerfully manifested upon you as you walk with the Lord. He'll see your seriousness and begin to give you more insight. Plus, it's just a, it's a spiritual law also where God begins to uh, just, just uh, cause your spirit man to dominate. You know, the, you read through uh, Paul's epistles, especially in Romans, talk about the war of the flesh and the spirit. And another place where I read uh, in a previous volume here, don't give any place for the lust of the flesh. Don't give any place for your flesh life to have uh, predominance. It's a wrestling match, you know, and the mind, the mind, the will and the emotions and the decision making switch on thing in your mind is what causes you to make the right decisions to choose spirit over flesh. Uh, eating too much lusting too much can i say that oh, i just did um gluttony lust envy pride malice gossip Ugh. witchcraft the work of the flesh galatians 5 calls it it talks about the, the attributes of the spirit but also the works of the flesh witchcraft was one of them witchcraft means to dominate over someone else. You ever see someone else that they always have to dominate somebody? It's real witchy, you know? It's witchy. It's wrong. It's evil. Don't put up with that garbage in your life. Don't let anybody manipulate you. Walk with God and he'll give you power to overcome every other person in every other situation. They can't uh, uh, negate the calling of God that you have, you know, when you're walking in power. I saw one pastor, it was real pitiful, bunch of witches, real witches, I don't know what they were involved in, occultically or whatever, but they came in and messed this whole church up, they were all in the worship team and the leadership people, and I, and I looked at the guy, he looked pitiful, I thought, this poor sucker, you know, he's a sucker for money and for women, yeah, so they just got in there and did him in, and I'm sure his church is not even there today. Uh, I saw him some time ago. He looked pitiful. I thought I would never go get involved with this guy, blah, blah. And uh, it's sad, you know. And, of course, we, we love people. We love pastors. We love those that say they're preachers. But, you know, you have to be careful on how you conduct yourself. Now, another thing is another guy I saw had a big conference. And even the uh, presidential leadership came. The vice president was there. In fact, when he left after he spoke, they brought me and sat me in his seat. The place was packed in the KICC ballroom, the Savo room. Uh, Savo ballroom it was for a big lunch. It was like a couple of thousand uh, preachers there, you know. And I asked one preacher who's a real funny guy too, not a really good cat. I said, hey, how would you get all these people here, uh, these preachers to come? You know, I was shocked at the attendance. And he said, well, it's easy, free lunch. I thought, yeah, they're belly again. You see these people? And out of 2,000 people that were there approximately, however many it was, the Lord spoke to me, and when they asked me to speak, which I wasn't on the program, but they asked me to come up and speak, and the Lord spoke this odd number to me. He said, 222. 222 people, men and women, that are here are the only ones that are really anointed and the only ones that God is really going to promote now. So out of the 2,000, there was about 10%. Yeah? 10% of the crowd of preachers that the Lord said he was going to really promote. I didn't plan to say that, but, you know, when I get on here, the, the Holy Ghost just speaks what he wants to say. And, uh, you know, it's a real serious thing. If you want to move a generation, you want to change a society, you need to live a holy life. You need to fast and pray. I've been talking about that. You need to consecrate yourself. 
You don't need to be led by your belly. You don't need to cause division. You don't remember Mark 16, 17? Romans 16, 17, Paul said, Mark those that cause division among you, for these serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but only their own belly. You got to watch the belly thing. What will I have to eat? Who flipping cares what you're going to have to eat? Go make some spaghetti, you jack. And, and, and put some sauce and butter on it. And eat that if you don't have nothing else. Make your, like, uh, ground flour or whatever. And make something up and just sit there and lift your hands and worship God and he'll provide. Who cares about your belly? Don't care at all. In fact, some people got this pot belly. They need to lose it. I'm speaking rough here. Here we go. I mean, there's a prophet talking here. I'm not going to talk to you like you're nice. Uh, life coach, pastor, three principles, three songs, you know, three fast, three slow, three hymns, three hers, a homily, the announcements, the sermonette for Christianettes, and then the prayer at the end, like you go home the way you came in Jesus' name. No, you're not going to go home the way you came in Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We need to get rough on ourselves, rough on the discipline factor. Stop jerking around with your life being slow. Let me tell you something what happens to you when you make a decision to live holy. When you choose to like get rid of your gluttony and your lust and your pride and your negativity. You know all those other things that go with it. Even fear. Even you know anxiety and stress for nothing. You, you make your environment right. Let me tell you what happens to you. You, 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 you. you stop being subject to other people's opinions or what they want. You begin to know more what you want. And you begin to get blessed on how, who you can trust. The trust factor, you know. Of uh, who is right. Who's wrong. I found this in Micah's. Micah's a great little, pro, a great little prophetic book. It's a, it's a short book, but what a powerful prophet Micah was. Micah 7, 5. Can you imagine this is in the Bible? It says, do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth. Ooh, Lord, don't say too much. From her who lies in your bosom, even someone that's close to you. Son dishonors father. Daughter can rise against mother. Daughter-in-law against blah, blah, blah. Man's, a man, he said a man's enemies can be the, the men of his own household. Therefore, I will look to the Lord, the prophet said. I'll wait for God of my salvation, my God will hear me. And it goes on to talk about the enemy can't rejoice over you. I've, I've been in this chapter before in previous broadcasts. But that's powerful right there. Watch how you trust in people. Can I tell you, when you get in the spirit, you'll begin to know who's who and what's what. You'll begin to know who is who and what's what. You'll begin to know uh, uh, who you can trust and it's not many people that you can trust all the time. Sad to say. Psalm 108 says the help of man can be useless. It says is useless. The, psalm, the psalmist must have been in a real mood that day. When he was writing that, I thought, wait a minute. People are good. People, some people are great. Some people God uses to help. A lot of great people, you know. We need the right, more of the right people. So you can't say the, the help of man is useless. It's just useless. No, that's not true. So, uh, although it's in the scripture, but the psalmist was on a rant there. But I like to, I like to add a little sugar and spice and everything nice to it and say, hey, uh, the help of men can be useless. In other words, I think the psalmist was pointing back to the Lord like Micah was here. I will trust in the Lord because he's the one that's going to make it all good and all correct. So we need to watch that. Now, when you get this life, what I'm talking about, I'm leading you somewhere in this, about the life of holiness, the path of holiness, holiness unto the Lord, which without which no one will see the Lord. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So it's not like a, 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 an, a, an ingredient that's like an optional ingredient in the mix. No, it's a mandatory one. So someone's got to tell you this. Someone has to preach this. I'm glad it's me. I'm glad I can live this. I'm glad I'm doing this. I'm glad I'm in, embarked upon this, embarking upon this more. I'm glad I'm hungering after God. It gives you power. You want power over nations. You want power in the world. You want power in your ministry. You want power in your business. You want power in your personal life and your stature as a warrior of Christ Jesus, as a, as a, as a kingdom person, as a vessel of, to be a vessel of honor. 
a righteous person, hey, you need to rise up in strength. And when you get this touch from heaven in the spirit, something happens. I, I can't, I, I don't know words. I could probably say it in tongues. Can you interpret this? Wow. <laughs> But you, 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 it's hard to say the, the common language. So the, the power of God in you, the confidence, the strength, it's, it's worth it. So put away your food. Don't be gluttonous. Put away your temptations. Make the decisions to live holy, to live unto the Lord. I'm going to continue this uh, more tomorrow. Some more things I want to say. I just wanted to give this quick word right now. But rise up and be bold as a lion and stop sinning and stop being uh, weak and afflicted and all that. Rise up and get in your, your space and your place with God. He's ready to do so much for you and for your life that is to become great and greater and greater and greater and ultimately great to advance his kingdom around the world. Thank you, partners, for sowing. I have the book, The Laws of Success and the Benefits of Excellence, as e-books, and I'm going to be sending to those, my partners that sow into this work, the information on how you can sow and tithe and give and give an offering and a first fruit and uh, a prophetic seed and all that. You, you can do it in the, in the information is in the heading of this title and also in the comments, and I look forward to hearing from you. Send me your prayer requests. And uh, your testimonies, I want to hear testimonies of great things happening. I'm getting so many of those. And people are being blessed financially. I want to hear about yours. That's another thing, financially, God will just bless your life. Can you believe that? By living consecrated unto him, and then you're giving and you're, you're working the biblical economic system, but with power, because you're hearing God and the anointing of, of, of heaven, heaven's touches upon your life finances begin to flow. I'm a witness, I know. So the Lord bless you. I'll see you again here tomorrow in Jesus' name. Love you much. Thomas Matthew the Fourth, The Life of Holiness, Volume 3. I'll be continuing in this. The Lord bless you richly. Share this with everyone you know. They need to hear this. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Love you much.